All right, in this region's chemistry video, we're going to go through questions 31 through 35 of the January 2013 Regents exam. All right, so looking at 31, it says, which electron configuration is selenium atom in the excited state? All right, so the first thing that's important to know here, this is a selenium atom. Atom, not ion, meaning that it must be neutral. So uh, we can look at the periodic table here and look selenium over here is atomic number 34. So what that tells us is that there must be 34 electrons here. If it were a selenium atom, then there would be, or sorry, if it were a selenium ion, then that would mean we would have more electrons than 34. Selenium would generally form a minus two ion, so the, the selenium minus two ion would have 36 electrons. But this is very specifically an atom, so that means we must have 34 electrons, all right? So looking at these, the first looking at these answer choices, the first thing we could do is count up the number of electrons here. Uh, so uh, two, eighteen, seven, and six. That would give us uh, thirty-three electrons. Two, eighteen, seven, and eight. That would give us thirty-five electrons. So right off the bat, answer choices one and four are incorrect because they don't have the right number of electrons. Uh, two and three, if we count these up, those both have thirty-four electrons each. So then uh, we know those are both uh, selenium atoms, uh, potentially. So which one of these would be an excited state? So remember, the excited state is when we take an energy or an electron from a lower energy level and promote it to a higher energy level. So looking at answer choice three here, we have two, eight, 18, six. This is filled in order. These electrons all are in their proper uh, filling order from low energy to high energy. We filled up all these orbitals just uh, would be the first energy level just an s and on the second energy level would have an s and a p this third one would have an s and a p and a d and this fourth one here we filled s and then part of a p all right so this filled in order this would be what, would, what we would call the ground state because it doesn't have uh, any electrons excited uh, from a lower energy to a higher energy if we look at answer choice two though we have two seven eighteen so here's this anomaly here right we didn't fill this second energy level all the way. We have one electron missing from it, and what happened to it was it got promoted to this higher energy level. So looking at these, we had two, eight, 18, and six here, and now we have two, seven, 18, and seven. So one of these in the second level went to the fourth level here. So promoting an electron from a lower energy level to a higher energy level, that would make it an excited state. So the answer here would be answer choice two for number 31. 432. When the hydronium ion concentration of a solution is increased by a factor of 10, what happens to the pH value? So it's important to remember that the pH is on a log scale. Remember our formula for pH, pH equals negative log of the H plus or the H3O plus ion concentration. So two things to note here. This is a log scale, meaning that for every uh, one unit increase in pH, we have a 10 unit increase in H plus or vice versa, a 10 unit increase in H plus would be a one unit decrease in pH. So it's an inverse relationship as well because of this negative sign here. This is negative log, kind of erased my L there, but negative log of the H plus concentration. So as H plus increases, pH decreases because again, this negative sign makes it an inverse relationship there. And then the log scale tells us that a 10 unit uh, increase in H plus is gonna have a one unit effect on pH. So if the H plus or the hydronium H3O plus uh, ion concentration increases by a factor of 10, the pH should not be a factor of 10, it should increase or decrease by a factor of one. And then we said, again, if this increases by a factor of 10, because of this negative sign, it's an inverse relationship, the pH would go down, decrease by one unit. So you can just think, remember, as long as you know your uh, pH scale, that low is acidic and high is basic, if we're increasing the H+, plus, H+, plus is going to make something acidic. This is going to be a lower pH because the lower pH is more acidic. Uh, so however you want to think about it here, you should come up with answer choice 1. Looking at question 33 then, uh, if we have a formula XF2, the element rec represented by X could be what? Well, right off the bat, group 1 and group 2 are metals. So we can take answer choices 3 and 4 out because they're saying that group 1 and group 2 are non-metals when we already know that they're metals. And then between which is this going to be, group one or group two, we're just going to use our oxidation state rules here to figure out what type of compound would go within, uh, with two fluorine atoms to make a neutral compound. So if we know that each fluorine atom likes a charge of negative one, if we look at our periodic table over here, uh, fluorine is a, 
is a halogen over here and it likes to have a minus one charge because if it gets a minus one charge that bumps it to the neon electron configuration giving it a full octet. All right, so uh, fluorine likes to have that electron configuration of minus one and being so electronegative it's usually going to get its way. So if we have minus one for each of these fluorines and we have two of them that means the total charge contributed by these fluorine ions is minus two. So what we need is this one element x is going to have a charge of plus two. So if it has to have a charge of plus two that must mean it's a group two element and again we already said these are going to be metals. If it were a group one metal say sodium Na would go with just one uh, fluorine atom making the compound NaF. Minus one here plus one here, these would balance out to be zero for the charge. Here we have two negative charges making negative two. That means we need a positive two to make the overall charge add up to zero. Because remember, in any of these ionic compounds, uh, the charge is going to add up to zero. So we need a group two metal because that gave us plus two charge to balance out the two negative charges from fluorine. All right, looking at question 34 here, which compound has the smallest percent composition of chlorine. So these all have chlorine, they all have one chlorine atom in them, or chlorine ion in uh, these cases. Uh, so which has the smallest percent chlorine is going to be which has the largest percent of the other element. So looking at these we just want to see uh, we have one each of these other elements that go with the chlorine. We have hydrogen, uh, potassium, sodium, and lithium. So whichever one of these has the heaviest or the, the highest amount of other substance or other uh, element besides chlorine is going to give chlorine the smallest percent composition by mass. So if we look at our periodic table we have lithium, sodium, hydrogen, and potassium. So uh, potassium here has a mass of 39, 23 for sodium, 7 uh, for lithium, and 1 for hydrogen. Potassium is obviously the heaviest element here. Uh, so potassium uh, is going to have the highest percent here in these chlorine compounds giving chlorine the lowest percent. Hydrogen here would have the lowest mass of these four elements, giving chlorine the highest mass percent of the bunch. So again, if we want the smallest percent chlorine, we want chlorine to take up you know, the smallest uh, mass percent, uh, then we need more other stuff. So in this case, we have one element. Potassium was the heaviest element of the bunch. It's going to uh, contribute more mass to the compound, meaning chlorine would contribute a lower percentage. And finally here, 35. Uh, we're basically just asked to balance this reaction and we want to know the coefficient of oxygen here. So what we need to do is just make sure that the oxygens balance out on both sides. So we have 12 uh, carbon dioxide molecules. So 12 times 2 here would give us 24 oxygens total in this compound. Because remember we have two oxygen atoms uh, in each, uh, of the, uh, in each uh, carbon dioxide molecule and we have 12 carbon dioxide molecules, so 12 times 2 would give us 24 here for the total number of oxygen atoms. Here we have 14 water molecules. Each water molecule has one uh, oxygen atom, so that makes a total of 14 oxygen atoms. Uh, and then if we add this up, this gives us a total of 38 uh, oxygen atoms on the right side of the equation. So we need 38 total on this side of the equation as well. So to find out this coefficient, we need 38 total. There's two molecules in each uh, oxygen, or there's two oxygen atoms in each oxygen molecule because it's diatomic. Uh, so to figure this out, we just need uh, 19 here because 19 times 2 would give us 38. So 19 is going to be our answer. That would be choice 3 here. So again, balancing equations, just make sure that you have the same number of each element on the left side as you do on the right side. Uh, we could verify all these other elements in here, but really oxygen was the only thing we were looking at here. Alright, so that's it for this video. We'll pick up with question 36 in the next video. Thanks for watching.